I just love this game. Welcome, welcome back to a game that I had started quite a long time ago. Well, not too long, but a couple of months ago. And that is The Witcher 3. Wanted. Cradle, used but unworn. Need a bow to accompany me to a friend's wedding. Willing to trade a leaky pot for a cart? <laughs> Writes these notices. Need a witcher? Any bloke willing to kill a monster, a witcher would do. Monster? What kind? Big, bad, ugly, squatch in the sewers. If you're interested, drop by the Garen estate. Ask for Olgaard von Everek. He's the one ordered this posted. And as people who are familiar with me may have known, I just started the original Witcher 3 Wild Hunt quite a couple of months ago, uh, before I'd gone on my vacations break. And during vacation I realized that the I was willing to do a complete playthrough of a full game, but something told me that the time consumption to record the entirety of the game when I get back from vacation is something that I might not be able to handle. So sadly, I ended the playthrough as it was, as to be honest with you, I wasn't really getting um, good vibes in terms of the time constraints. It was now... It was either I made long videos or I didn't do it at all. And of which it would require a, quite a number. Just imagine a hundred one hour long or a hundred thirty minute long videos. It, it's quite a lot of work. Uh, but I, I still love the game. I finished it. It was great. As you can see, I'm level 33 wearing my Undvik armor. And then, as you may know, about what, two months ago, a month ago, I would say almost two months ago, the Hearts of Stone expansion came out for The Witcher 3. I was happy I got it on release, but I never actually got the time to play it. That's how little time, to be honest with you, I've had for most other games. I can only do one game at a time. I can only play one game at a time. I didn't really have that much time. Uh, I heard that the DLC was awesome. But like I said, I haven't played personally The Witcher in over four months. Almost five months, actually. The last time I played The Witcher was in August. So that's a pretty long time. I was... <laughs> I was still getting the gist of the game, still remembering what the buttons do when I got this. And as I was playing, I actually got the feeling that I still enjoy this game. I've been having quite a number of discussions with my uh, some close friends and a cousin of mine about how I feel that there aren't that many great games currently, well, for me personally this year and in my life in general. There are a lot of mediocre games. There are a lot of games that come in with a bang and fizzle away. And to be honest with you, for me, a, such a game isn't really good because if I'm enjoying the game for one week and then I forget about it for the years to come, surely it was not well lived. It wasn't time well spent, so I don't consider that as good. And I've just been searching through, I've been actually been playing through most of my old games, replaying them just to relive old times. But when I played The Witcher, the new expansion did give me bright expectations. Hi, mate! Your mug's not familiar. What is it you want? Looking for old Geard von Everick. Ah, that'll be inside. Olgerd von Everick. I'm looking for him. Not here by that name. Can't help wondering. Who are you? Who do we look like? A crew of cutthroats? Or a band of former soldiers who got lucky? Ah, but that's where you err. Cause we're sons of nobles all. 
<laughs> and daughters. So, gonna tell me who you are, precisely? The Redanian Free Company. The wild ones, folk call us. Owing to the boar in our coat of arms. I was told I'd find old Geard von Everek here. Someone's made an arse of you, brother. <laughs> so maybe you can make up for that and help me, brother. Something tells me you and me have got different mams. <laughs> All right, Ungus, you've had your fun. I'm old Geard. Tell me. What brings you here? No, no, I'm all geared. You? Not likely. I'm all geared. <laughs> <laughs> You're all old geared, that it? Got it right at last. One man split into three bodies. Not interested in his balls, so which of you's got his brain? <laughs> Not laughing. Guess that means you didn't get the brain. <laughs> nope. I'm the one got his fists! And I haven't been beaten up in such a long time in a fist fight. <laughs> in this particular point, I'd honestly forgotten what I used to do in fist fights in The Witcher. Usually, what I would resort to in a losing battle, or just to keep it safe, I'll just wait for the heavy attack, dodge back, and then counter attack with whatever I could get the timing for, whether that be a heavy or just a quick jab. But as you can see, we have a jolly band of raiders. They don't seem to be the owners of this particular place. Um, no one really wants to tell us where Von Everick is. And they're playing games with us, claiming that they are all this one person who are looking for, who put up the notice uh, to start off the Hearts of Stone DLC. Uh, but of course, that isn't the case. The person is one man, and we are to find this man by beating this fool. Quite a stubborn guy who packs a punch. I have a terrible feeling that this DLC is going to be quite hard, considering that most of the uh, level requirements are like level 33 or level 32 and above, and I'm only at level 32 as we currently speak, uh, which means we're barely meeting the requirements for the stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Hopefully, we can beat up this guy and go meet the owner. Well, not the owner, but meet up Olgade himself. You're oh, good. You'd fit right in with our band of merry men. Come on, I'll take you to Old Geard. What do they call you? Geralt of Rivia. Bit of advice, Geralt of Rivia. Once you meet Olgird, try and pique his interest. I gotta pique his interest? He's the one who wants a monster dead. Ottoman, sir. You've a guest. Do you know what types of sculptures fetch the best prices? Statues of deities. Bus of kings and nudes. And what have we here? A naked wench. What do you think of her? I happen to like it, especially the two ovoid forms. A jester. Good. I don't like men with no sense of humor. They bore me to death. <sighs> I used to like Votticelli. The life he could breathe into a chunk of cold stone. But I look at it now, and it seems just a rock, ideally proportioned, not a floor on its surface, painfully perfect. 
As lifeless and boring as a boulder at the roadside. <laughs> That's better. More interesting, at the least. Very well. And now to the matter at hand. Let's rejoin the company. Partake of some refreshment first. Ataman all geared. Long may he live! Long live the Ataman! Long live the Ataman! Long live the Ataman! Come and drink with us! Well, we haven't a choice now. <laughs> Fetch us some wine, dear. And a nibble or two. this some special occasion, or just feel like feasting? Every occasion is special. Today we celebrate a dubbing. Whose? Squire Herodor's new sabre. I've hit on a name for it! Fair sabre, I dub thee Traditiana! <laughs> <laughs> Monster in the sewers. Know anything more? I've no clue what it is. Only that it's deadly. I'd not have bothered had my cook not become its victim. Ooh. The way she prepared game had no equal. That why she was in the sewers? To fetch game? Eh? Hey. She went to a fair with her sister or cousin. Matters not. Daff wench convinced her a prince transformed into a toad lives in the Oxenfurt sewers. And you know women. Each craves a prince, and will weird need deep through shite to get him. Vissy was no exception in that respect. Now she went, never to return. Wasn't the first, it seems, either. <laughs> hey! Leave her be! Is there any way to treat the lord of the manor's daughter? Apologies. Now, where were we? Oh, yes, the contract. So, you'll check it. Just one formality to resolve first. My pay. Never you mind that. Return with the beast's head, and you'll have leave to take anything you wish from here. Awfully generous. Still, I'd prefer to agree a specific amount. Ooh, fine. How much would you like? Three? Four hundred crowns? Four hundred and fifty. Agreed. And that'll be in addition to whatever memento you wish to take. Consider the beast gone. Confident. Bring me its head, and the reward shall be yours. And we have our quest. I would like to believe... Wait, let me talk about that after we exit this door. Hey, you! Puss papers! Name's Geralt. But I'm gonna call you Puss Peepers. Is that a problem? Get to the point. Got an offer. Potentially lucrative Puss Peepers. Someone's killed me mate. Name was Clivert. You're to figure out who did it. Then cut the bugger's head off. Why not avenge him yourself? Seems like you all relish swinging your sabres. Aye, we do. And if I knew who'd axed Clivert, I'd have gutted him ages ago. Thing is, I don't. But you see a lot with them puss peepers. You'll track him down. Keep talking. Clivert dealt fist tech. A few days past, he rode to Bowden to take a delivery. Never came back. Been there? Actually seen his corpse? No, but Clivert was one damned reliable orson. We was to meet. He didn't show. Can only mean he's dead. Find the bastard who did this. Find him and kill him. I'll pay top coin. Need to think it through. Clivert's got a scar on his forehead. 
Not unlike yours. Spot that, you'll know it's his body. Said I'd think about it. Know what, Puss Peeps? One look at a bloke and I know what he's made of. You'll do what I ask. I bet anything on it. Look for me in Oxenfurt! The Alchemy Inn on the main square! Okay. As I was saying, first we're gonna talk to Orgade. You, you can tell, well, first of all, when one of his men tried to molest the the woman serving the food and drink, he had said that that's not the way to treat the Lord of the Manor's daughter. So that would imply, well, if you speak in that sense, it would either imply that Olgate himself is the Lord of the Manor and that's his daughter, but since he was speaking in an indirect form, you would think that he's saying that, yo, that's not what you do to the owner of the house's daughter, so it's none Come of them are the Lord of, uh, the Lord of the Manor. And this is the daughter of the, the owner of this building. So this makes uh, you imply that it's either they stole the building and maybe the Lord of the Manor is currently not near Oxenfurt or not in here. Um, maybe went on a journey and they're here stealing his property while he's away and they kidnapped the daughter and never needed to use and abuse the, 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 the land as they pleased before he came back. Or they are raiders who came in and killed the Lord of the Manor to take the land for themselves. Or any other particular situation you can come up with. But either way it results in the Lord of the Manor not being there and the daughter being taken as spoils. Um, either way it's not a good situation for the daughter of the Lord of the Manor because she is under hostage. She's under siege by these people. And sadly, I don't think there's any way she can get out, but it seems that Orgade is a bit compassionate, even though what he's doing is wrong. Uh, at least he's not uh, doing something brutal to the girl or to the woman, or at least he's trying to make sure that she's not, she's not harmed in any physical way. Though I'm sure the mental damage has already been done. I'm gonna get to this village where we are to investigate, well, at least get the first steps as to what exactly happened in the murdering of uh, the particular victim. But I'm just looking, <laughs> looking to see how bad I was really. I totally forgotten the combat of this game. I don't know. It felt foreign to me playing this game again after so many months. I didn't even know what the buttons did. But luckily enough, by the powers vested in me, I managed to dodge as much as possible. And we didn't die without putting up at least a decent fight, even though it was a bit sloppy. But with those monsters dead, I can actually check out the village and see what exactly is going on here. Smells like solutions, reagents. Wonder what's cooking. Now we found reagents in the air. Well, she did say he was cooking up this tech, so that that could be the case. Now the thing is, since the the scent is in the air, it's really hard to track as it seems to be uh, dissolving into the into the air. It's really hard to get a good fix as to where exactly it is. But then the minimap, the minimap gives us a generalized location as to where exactly we should go, and that's the hut right here. And get some business done. Smells of. Uh, they were cooking Fistech. Took most of the equipment. Only left what was broken. Open window. Boot print on the bed. Somebody was in a hurry. True as true can be. Dangerous trade narcotics. So it seems that someone has taken the equipment that, that they were using to cook the fixed stick within the first place. Now the question is, is it the person we're looking for or did someone come after him? Chances are someone came in for this person because you could see footprints uh, leading out of the building through the window. That could only imply one thing. A person was trying to escape 
or a person was trying to intrude. In this particular case, I would like to believe that someone was trying to escape because the footprints are right by the bed, so maybe the guy was sleeping and then he saw an intruder by the door by the opposite window and he made it up, he ran for his life. He was like, screw the equipment, I need to get away, this person's gonna kill me and chances are that person might have been the one, that person might have been the killer. Not too sure, we have to go around the back though and get more information on what exactly has been going on. Footprints. Uneven. Someone ran through here. Now we can get a lead on the footprints as to the person who ran out the building. Stopped here for a second, hid, then ran on. He hid and ran into the fields. See what's going on here. Scar on his forehead. Must be Clivert. Bolt in the back. Went in deep so a close range shot. From the village where that direction looks like. Okay, so he was short, uh, shot in the back while he was trying to run away. So at least we know that there was an intruder and he was running from his life. Probably another first tech dealer that he had done wrong. Or a deal gone bad or people just coming to Crossbow take care of him. And footprints deep. Shooter must have been wearing heavy armor. Okay, so at least we now know that the shooter was not a bandit. Considering that the shooter was wearing heavy armor, chances are these could be knights. Now the question is why would the knights be chasing first tech dealers? Um, potentially, you have to consider that this is a time of war, so it could just be a rogue band. Hoofprints, leading towards the hill. Someone's still there. It could be a rogue band of knights doing vigilante work, maybe going around taking care of fist tech dealers or anyone doing wrong in the world. It could be rogue knights who are actually dealing in fist tech. Or... Uh, could be something auto, uh, totally different, but anyway, in this particular case we found horse prints, so it was a band of people on horse in heavy armor or assuming knights of some sort, whether they be rogue or not, we currently do not know. And we have to venture forth and follow the horse, uh, the horse track leads, hopefully to show us where exactly they came from, why exactly they were attacking a first tech dealer Clivert, um, and if there's any business to it, what exactly is going on here with the knights and first tech dealers. So in this particular case, we've actually found an encampment of knights. Considering that the marker location says this is a bandit location or a bandit camp, could imply that these knights are either now bandits, i.e. they've gone rogue, Oh, god damn the arrow, the archers are just too strong. It's either they've gone rogue or they have actually attacked a bandit's camp, i.e. this one. And um, they've taken over, now we are attacking them. But since they're hostile, of course, they're not friendly in any way. Usually there would be some form of confrontation. really difficult really really difficult I was struggling uh, bear in mind as well the last time I played this particular game and up until this particular point I believe they've been up to five patches five to ten <laughs> I'll dare say I'll dare throw um, ten is such a large number I believe there has been five to ten different patches and so most of the special effects were quite new whether they be refreshing or not i don't know back in the day when i played when i initially played the witcher if you got staggered by an enemy if it staggered you out of an attack pattern um the screen really didn't have an effect but now if you get staggered out of an um of an attack route uh the screen goes white and it shakes well that's a new new thing that i hadn't seen in an extremely well ever Considering that it's been an extremely long time since I actually played the game. It's really difficult to get the Axie off. Um, 
I'm not sure if that's something that has changed, but I... Maybe it's just me forgetting. Uh, but I do remember Axie being extremely strong. Axie, Eden, and um, Quinn have always been my go-to spells for every build that I ever played. Because I feel that those spells are just extremely overpowered and the utility that they bring is just ridiculous. Now, what I was now doing when I'd finished the game, or at least towards the part when I was finishing the game, um, all I would do is I would probably put Quinn on myself. And then, if someone walked into an ear den trap, um, I would then go for a charged heavy attack, uh, which is a new ability for um, that I had obtained as a, uh, in the warrior class of the development tree. And then I would charge it up to four. It uses as much stamina as you charge and converts it into damage. Boom, go for a heavy critical attack. Uh, or you could use Quinn and stun them and go for the exact same thing. But anyway, I'll see you next time.